From precisely how the galaxy might have looked had a number of rather influential murders not gone down at all, to what events could have perhaps been avoided had a notable Force user not decided to turn their back on the cause. These are those often fantasized alternate Star Wars realities fans would no doubt love to see explored at some point down the road. But until then, let's explore them here. I'm Gareth from What Culture Star Wars, and here are the 10 biggest Star Wars what ifs. Number 10 What if Din Jarin wasn't saved by Mandalorians? Many minds were very quickly blown the second it became clear that the titular Mandalorian by the name of Din Jarin was dramatically saved from imminent death as a youngster by none other than the Death Watch slash Clan Vizsla during the thick of the Clone Wars. As revealed in the Mandalorian Season 1 Chapter 8 epic flashback, this seemingly coming at a time when Mandalorians were doing their utmost to stave off the Separatist threat across the galaxy, it does beg the question what the future could have held for the eventual Mando had he actually been saved from a similar fate as the one shared by his unfortunate parents by the Jedi instead. After all, there's every chance a Jedi general could have been called in to rescue those desperate few being massacred on Ak Vetina, alongside some trusty clones. And said reality could have then led to a recently orphaned Din being brought into the Jedi Order to learn the ways of the Force as a youngling, instead of being accepted as a foundling by the Mandalorians and eventually taught the ways of the Children of the Watch. Hell, he could have even bumped into Grogu at the Jedi Temple as a youth too. Speaking of which, number 9, what if Grogu chose the way of the Jedi? And keeping in that vein, fast forward a couple of decades and Din Djarin's favourite little guy, Grogu, very much found himself at a similar crossroads during Disney Plus's recent The Book of Boba Fett series. But far from potentially being in a position where he could have been taught the ways of the Force by the Jedi, the child was offered two concrete options by none other than Luke Skywalker himself. During Chapter 6's climactic scene, take Mando's gift of Beskar chainmail and kiss goodbye to the Jedi way, or take Yoda's lightsaber and continue being trained by Master Skywalker. As fans now know, Grogu nabbed the armor and hopped back to Mos Espa. However, had the 50-year-old Sprog took hold of his fellow green force wielder's saber, there's a strong chance Grogu could have become one of the foundations of Luke's eventual Jedi Academy. Said butterfly effects could have then led to the gifted Padawan coming into contact with Ben Solo, and perhaps keeping the future Kylo Ren from completely destroying said temple. But it could have also spelt trouble for Boba Fett and Mando too. With the unstoppable Rancor potentially laying waste to all in Mos Espa, if it wasn't for Grogu's force-powered intervention. Number 8. What if Rey joined the dark side? Fans were quite rightly hooked by the concept of Daisy Ridley's Rey, potentially wandering into the dark side on the back of the Rise of Skywalker's teaser trailer footage, hinting at an ominous future for the sequel generation's chosen one. Yet it was ultimately revealed that said heel turn was little more than a vision slash fear of who she could become if she were to embrace her grandpap's relationship relationship with the Force. In what could undoubtedly offer up a ton of unexpected and instantly captivating alternate scenarios, however, Rey genuinely accepting her place as the next coming of Palpatine perhaps would have seen the inherently powerful Force user actually join forces with Kylo Ren, en route to completely dominating the galaxy and squashing the Resistance. Who knows, maybe Empress Palpatine's relentless quest for more power could even have led to Kylo Ren having second thoughts about the concept of ruling and bullying this universe, paving the way for a different variation of the long-awaited return of Ben Solo as the two inevitably came to blows over the fate of the galaxy far, far away. Number 7. What if Count Dooku never turned his back on the Jedi? Count Dooku's decision to leave the likes of Master Yoda and the gang behind proved to be arguably the most damaging Lost 20 departure of the lot. If Yoda had found a way to convince convinced Dooku that he still belonged, and that the corruption of the Senate was merely a passing moment in time. Honestly mate, it's gonna be fine. There's a world where Darth Sidious wouldn't have had the opportunity to enlist the powerful former Jedi Master as his new apprentice. Without CIS Head of State Dooku as Sidious's influential face of the Separatist forces, there's also a strong possibility the Clone Wars wouldn't have been kicked off at all, or at the very least they would have been delayed a bit. And had Dooku been on the Jedi Council at various points in the prequels, Anakin Skywalker would have likely had a much more vocal supporter in a similar vein to Qui-Gon Jinn, with the fallen Jedi being the Padawan of Dooku of course. With that in mind, he may have finally been granted the rank of Master after all, and not been nudged that little bit closer to the dark side. Number 6. What if Anakin let Mace Windu strike down Palpatine. When asked to pinpoint the exact moment that emphatically killed any hope of Anakin Skywalker dramatically seeing the light and staying loyal to the Jedi way, most would point to one fateful sequence within Sheev Palpatine's office during Revenge of the Sith. With Mace Windu on the 
the verge of cutting down the Dark Lord of the Sith himself, the eventual Darth Vader suddenly gives in to his feelings and slices Windu's saber-wielding arm off before his new master sealed the Sith deal by shocking the Jedi into oblivion. In another reality, Anakin could have sensed a chance to finally earn Windu's trust and allowed him to let loose the fatal blow on the all-powerful Palpatine. However, even if his eventual decision to kill off his supposed only way of keeping his beloved Padme Amidala alive could have ironically saved her life in the long run, that still wouldn't make his marriage to the Senator any less of a huge no-no in the eyes of the Jedi, no matter how pivotal he was in the destroying of the Sith. Be a Sith or be expelled from the Jedi Order? Bit of a lose-lose if you ask me. Number 5. What if Snoke wasn't a strand cast? Alongside who in the holy hell Rey was actually related to, easily the most common debate sequel supporters found themselves wrapped up in, centered around who, or more importantly what, Supreme Leader Snoke was. In the end, the call was made to have the disfigured Force user be little more than a strand cast forged by a resurrected Emperor Palpatine as a way of manipulating Kylo Ren and forging the First Order from across the galaxy. And with that, the far more intriguing alternate theories such as Snoke being Darth Plagueis all along, a battered and lightning savage Mace Windu unexpectedly returning to the full to torment Anakin Skywalker's grandson, or a returning Grand Inquisitor were all depressingly extinguished in one unwanted revelation. If Snoke was far more than simply a pawn in the Emperor's games, there's every chance he could have collided with the bitter revived old sod later down the road too making for no doubt one of the most spectacular showdowns ever to be unleashed on the galaxy. Number 4. What if Qui-Gon Jinn survived? The cutting down of Qui-Gon Jinn during the Phantom Menace's epic Duel of the Fates was an event that had a frankly staggering impact on the fate of just about every soul in this galaxy. If the Maverick Jedi Master had been around to teach Anakin Skywalker the ways of the Force and provided the tormented youngster with the father figure he so desperately desired, there's every chance the Chosen One wouldn't have eventually been led down a far darker path and ultimately been responsible for the death of many a Jedi and civilian over the decades. Also, had Jin managed to come out on top in his battle with Darth Maul on Naboo, perhaps the Sith Padawan would have been dealt a more fatal hand than merely being sliced in two by eventual mortal enemy Obi-Wan Kenobi! This likely would have led to many of the events of the Clone Wars and Rebels animated series not coming to pass such as Maul killing off Kenobi's beloved Duchess Satine Kreese, for example. And who wouldn't want to live in a world where Satine lives happily ever after with her OBA? Number 3. What if Ahsoka Tano never left the Jedi Order? Much like Dooku before her, Ahsoka Tano's choice to leave the Order wasn't without its consequences either, though at least she didn't go all Sith on us. After all, it was the Jedi Commander's decision to walk out on the cause that ultimately planted one of the most important seeds of doubt into her former master's mind about whether the Jedi were actually fighting the good fight. If Tano had stayed put and happily accepted Mace Windu and Yoda's invite back into the team, surely Skywalker would have been less likely to turn to the dark side in his bids to keep Padme Amidala from biting the dust, with the conflicted Jedi probably turning to Tano as he searched for a solution instead. That being said, there's also a strong chance Ahsoka could have found herself in a scenario where she wasn't actually able to fight her way out of Order 66 had she been on the front line. Perhaps she would have fallen victim to some clone blasters on the battlefield, or worse, been cut down by the newly christened Darth Vader himself. Number 2. What if Luke became Darth Vader? In a what-if scenario come to life, George Lucas once pitched to screenwriter Lawrence Kasdan that instead of having Luke merely hold on to his newly redeemed father as he kissed goodbye to the land of the living in Return of the Jedi, the Skywalker son would have picked up his papa's mantle. As Lucas would reportedly pitch, Luke takes his mask off, the mask is the very last thing, and then Luke puts it on and says, Now I am Vader. Surprise! The ultimate twist. Now I will go and kill the rebel fleet and I will rule the universe. Kazdan was all in on this seriously dark turn of events, it must be said. Though Lucas would eventually remind the writer that this was supposed to be for kids, you know? So maybe having the hero go on a rebel killing spree wasn't the best shout. But if you thought the I am your father reveal was something, just imagine the amount of jaws that would have hit the floor had Luke decided to take advantage of the Sith power vacuum and rule the galaxy. Perhaps with his sister Leia along for the ride as his Padawan too. Keep it in the family and all that. Number 1. What if Han Solo was allowed to die much earlier? It's no secret that Harrison Ford had been angling for the death of Han Solo long before his eventual demise at the hands of his son Ben during the climax of The Force Awakens. So what if Han did actually make the ultimate sacrifice during the original trilogy ending Return of the Jedi? Well, for a start, Solo and Leia Organa would have definitely not tied the knot on Endor a few days after the dramatic battle on the forest moon, and said lack of marriage would have no doubt meant that any little Solos would have also been off the cards too. So no Ben Solo slash Kylo Ren's would have made their way into the galaxy. 
galaxy. Chewbacca would have likely either dedicated himself entirely to the New Republic cause and or gone about liberating his homeworld of Kashyyyk on his lonesome, and Leia might have been thrust into a far darker place in the wake of her love's demise, potentially giving into the dark side too. All in all, Solo's sacrifice would have certainly added some serious emotional weight to the conclusion of that OG trilogy, but this what if has the potential to be a touch depressing the more you think about where it could have ultimately led. In short, it seems Lucas was right to have a bad feeling about this one. And that's our list. Know of any other huge Star Wars what ifs that we've missed? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and find some more awesome articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth from What Culture Star Wars. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this lovely video today. May the Force be with you, and hopefully I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.